Good afternoon. No, sorry. Good evening, everyone. How's everyone's evening going so far today? Friday, y'all. We made it through another week. For many of us, school week, work week, or just we just made it through. <laughs> but by God's grace, we made it, and we are in. We are in our right minds. Um, we're able to see, we're able to walk, and just be able to enjoy the wonderful, wonderful things that God has given us and things that he has restored upon us. So thank God for that and for just seeing us through another week. Day again. I mean, well, this week has been pretty fast, but you know, I'm not complaining. We made it, so okay. But um, I pray that all of your day, it, um, all your whole your week was great. It was wonderful, and if you're still here, regardless of whatever it is that you may encounter this week, God saw you through it because you're still here. If you're able to hear my voice and you're able to see me, that is a blessing. You are still here, you're able to see, and you're able to hear. So praise God for that. So today, we are on Exodus 19 at Mount Sinai. And yesterday, not yesterday, but two days ago, um, I wasn't on yesterday, but um, Wednesday, we read Exodus 18, which is when, um, recap of that, um, at Moses' father, Jethro, he came to visit Moses. And so, of course, during his visit there, Moses told his father-in-law, of all the wonderful and good things that God had done for them, you know, during that time he had been there. Because, you know, from the time he got the, um, to Egypt, he went and he went to Egypt and he was trying to get um, help save the Israelites and rescue them out of Egypt. And so he just told them of the story and what happened and, you know, God's mighty hand and all that he had did for them. He had done a lot of things. So just sit now telling the story. Imagine someone coming to visit you and telling you all of these things that God had did. Wonderful things like this. You would be so amazed. It's like watching them. You would think it was just almost like watching a movie, just hearing of these wonderful works that God had done upon these people, how he rescued them and saved them. That would have to be such amazing stories. It's almost like hearing testimonies. You know how when you hear testimonies, it's just a wonderful thing to hear. And just hearing this, it had to have been such a delight to just hear and know this. And of course, upon um, Moses telling him that, um, Moses' father-in-law said, hold on. He said, now I know that the Lord is greater than all other gods. He said, praise be to the Lord. So anyway, um, upon all that, you know, Moses having this conversation with his father-in-law telling him about what God did. Um, Moses, he was acting as judge for the people, the um, for all the people in Israel. They came to them, they came to Moses with all disputes, all issues, whatever. They came to Moses about it. And there were days where they were before Moses from morning till evening. So we know that morning to evening, that's hours. That's like eight hours or greater, 10 hours or greater. So, and because Moses was the only one figuring these issues out for them. So with his father-in-law saw that, he was like, no, that's not the right way. You're going to wear you and your these people out. That's just going, that's just too much. So he gave him some advice and he told him, how about you get some trusted people upon your, get some trusted men upon your people and teach them, you know, and have the issue, um, have them serve as judges, trustworthy people, not just anybody from within the Israelites, but trustworthy people who hate this honest game. 
So he said, pick you some people and have them serve as judges as well and have the people come to them for all their disputes. But the more serious issues, they'll come to God. I mean, come to Moses about. So Moses liked the idea. So he went with that idea. So that's where we left off. And as I was saying, we, we look at that where I couldn't think of the word delegation, delegate, where um, you split up tasks amongst one another. Instead of one person doing all these different things, split it up and have one person do one thing, have another person do another. You split it up so that you won't be so worn out. And so here we see that's what happened when um, Moses' father-in-law gave him that idea to do that instead of doing it all. You got a lot of people amongst you. You shouldn't be sharing in the work by yourself. You should be sharing this work with others so that they can help you. So you won't wear yourself out and all, you know, and just be tired. So here, this is what we read where he did that. So again, we see in this chapter 18 and chapter 17, where they were working as a team, working together to help one another. So here we are on Exodus 19 at Mount Sinai. So we're going to get right into that um, part of the chapter and see what this is talking about. And so before we do that, I just want to do a word of prayer and then we'll go ahead and read Exodus 19. Father God, we thank you so much for your teaching, your blessings, your favor, your love. And God, I thank you for the wisdom that you're going to pour upon us today. Father, I ask that you just please forgive me of any sin, any iniquity, Father, anything that I have may, I may have done wrong today before you that wasn't right. I ask that you forgive me of my sins known and unknown. And God, I just ask that you forgive us all. And God, I ask that you just pour out your wisdom and spirit upon us, Father, as we read your word, Father, as we read Exodus 19, Father, give us understanding in it to understand it receive it and apply it, God, and let it bless us, Father. And God, just speak to me and through me, Father, um, whatever the takeaway, whatever the insight you have for me, God, help me to clearly talk about it. Help me to receive something from this. Help us to receive something from what we're reading, God, because we know each scripture is a blessing in itself. So help give us a takeaway of what we can take from this and be a blessing to ourselves or others, Father. But thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the teaching and reading of it, Lord. Thank you so much, Father. Please forgive us. Open our eyes and our ears to receive you. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So you can read along on your um, your Bible app or um, you can read it from either you can pull out your bible and read it from the bible which is what i love to do or just listen and watch and be blessed by just hearing the word of god so exodus 19 at mount sinai in the third month in the third month after the israelites left egypt on the very day they came to the desert of sinai after they set out from Rephidim, they entered the desert of Sinai, and Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. So here they camped there in the desert in front of a mountain. Okay. Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the house of Jacob and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagles wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations, you will be my treasure, treasured possession. So if you obey him, if he's saying, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all of you, out of all, I mean, out of all nations, he said they would be his treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, which it is, he created the whole earth. He said, although the whole earth is mine, you 
will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. So God has called Moses from the mountain and this is what he is saying to Moses. So Moses went back and summoned the elders of the people and set before them all the words the Lord had commanded him to speak. The people all responded together. We will do everything the Lord has said. So Moses brought their answer back to the Lord. So Moses went, he heard what God had said to him. So he went to the elders, told them, told them all that God had said. So here it is, they're saying we will do all that the Lord is saying. So now Moses is going back to the Lord to give um, his answer and what they had told to him that they would do. So the Lord said to Moses, I am going to come to you in a dense cloud so that the people will hear me speaking with you and will always put their trust in you. Then Moses told the Lord what the people had said. And the Lord said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes and be ready by the third day. Because on that day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in sight of the people, put limits for the people. So he's going to come down on the third day. So he told him, be ready by the third day. Because that's that was the day that he was going to come down on Mount Sinai in sight for the people to see. Okay, And he said, put limits for the people around the mountain and tell them. Be careful you do not go up to the mountain or touch the foot of it. So be careful now. I'm going to come on third day so that he's going to come down on Mount Sinai in sight of all the people for them, in sight of all the people. And he was telling Moses to tell them, you know, you could put limits around this, um, this, this area that I'm going to be at. Tell them to be careful not to go up the mountain or touch the foot of it. Wait, whoever touches the mountain shall surely be put to death. He shall surely be stoned or shot with arrows. Not a hand is to be laid on him. So whoever was to touch this and disobey God were to be put to death, whether it be stoned, shot with arrows, however. But you are not to put your hands on that person. But that was how they were to be put to death. And that's how serious he was. If he touched it and disobeyed me, you were going to be put to death. So whether man or animal, he shall not be permitted to live. Only when the ram's horn sounds a long blast, may they go up to the mountain. After Moses had gone down the mountain to the people, he consecrated them and they washed their clothes. Then he said to the people, prepare yourselves for the third day. Abstain from sexual relations. <laughs> Excuse me. So on the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning with a thick cloud over the mountain. Imagine seeing something like this. What would be your thoughts? Happy Sabbath. So what would be your thoughts seeing something like this? So, but... You've seen it out of blue, not even knowing what's going on. But see, they're seeing it, but they already know what's going on because they were already warned the third day. This is when God was going to, you know, come down to Mount Sinai. So, um, but still, even though, even so knowing that, you're not knowing how he's going to come. You just know he's going to come. But just seeing something like that, it's just like, that would be so frightening to see. But I guess over, it would be frightening, but at the same time, maybe, I don't know. I would think it would be a joyous situation, um, uh, a sight to see, but in your state of mind, seeing something like that would be kind of scary. So maybe it was probably scary for them. I don't know. But so, um, so on the third day, there was thunder and lightning with a thick cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast. Everyone on the camp trembled. Then Moses led the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord descended on it in fire. The smoke billowed up from it like smoke. The smoke billowed up from it like smoke from a furnace. 
That's a lot of smoke. The whole mountain trembled violently and the sound of the trumpet grew louder and grew louder. You hear like a think of a horn. And when you hear it, it's just, oh, it just, it scares you. So a mountain is loud, loud trumpet. It just keeps going and it's getting louder and louder. That would have to be, that would have to sound so disturbing and so scary in my ears and it being louder and louder. And I'm already seeing all the smoke and stuff, not knowing what's going to happen at this point. So um, the trumpet grew louder and louder. Then Moses spoke and the voice of God answered him. The Lord descended to the top of the mountain. I'm sorry, the Lord descended to the top of Mount Sinai and called Moses to the top of the mountain. So Moses went up. And the Lord said to him, go down and warm the people so they do not force their way through to see the Lord and many of them perish. Even the priests who approach the Lord must consecrate themselves or the Lord will break out against them. Moses said to the people, the people cannot come up Mount Sinai because you yourself warned us, put limits around the mountain and set it apart as holy. The Lord replied, go down and bring Aaron up with you. But the priests and the people must not force their way through to come up to the Lord or he will break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them. So that concludes Exodus 19. So just giving us a little rundown of Mount Sinai, what this mountain was all about. And Mount Sinai was just this mountain. It was the mountain where God had called to Moses to tell him to come up and give this message to the Israelites. And so that's what he did. He gave the message, told them what to do. And he told them that on the third day, he would, he would appear not in physical form or for them to see him because I, they couldn't have seen him physically because we hear, we read where it says, um, let's see. Okay. Where it says, um, where Moses went up and the Lord said to him, go down and warn the people so they do not force their way through to see the Lord and many of them and many of them perish. So if they were to try to force themselves up to see the Lord, they would perish. So he was not being seen. He was just being heard. All they saw was this smoke and was able to hear his voice. But um, so that right there scripture tells us okay he was not they did not actually see him they were just hearing him and they see you know this this smoke that was before them and all this thunder and stuff like that so what what is your takeaway from this it's pretty simple pretty quick you know just describing you know talking about the mountain and you know just god coming before the people um, and this smoke, this, uh, what is it? What did it say? Something about fire. Um, Mount Sinai was covered with smoke. Yeah, just smoke because the Lord descended on it in fire. So Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord descended on it in fire. So he came upon them this way, not for them to see him, how he looks or anything like that. This is how he came before them. But he came before them. He had obviously God had a message. He wanted to talk to them. Um, he went down and he taught. Well, he gave Moses the message to tell the Israelites. And of course, here Moses did what God had told him to do. So we see here um, that God, when he gives orders and he lays out his word, his commands, his laws, his covenant, whatever it is that God lays down. And he gives us word on what we should do or should not do. And when we choose to not do what God tells us to not do, God takes it very serious. And 
we don't know how God will react to it. So just reading this, when we see that when God told them to not come touch this, do not um, put a berry. He told them to put a berry on this mountain so that they cannot um, for them not to come and touch. What do you say? Be careful that they don't go up the mountain or they for not they were not to go up that mountain or touch the foot of it. Those were his clear. That was his clear and understanding words to the people. Do not touch it or come up. And if they were to do so, they would be they were to be put to death. So for God to say that, that's just how serious we are to take God's words when he says, don't do something. Because when he says not to do it, he says it for a reason. And we may not understand that reason. It may not be for us to understand that reason, but it's for our own good. It's not for us to question it. It's just God is saying, don't do it. And if your parent says, don't do it, you don't ask your parent why. Well, why can't I do it? <laughs> why? You don't question me. Because of many of us, if you kind of question your parent about what they told you not to do, some of you probably gonna get a backhand <laughs> or whatever. So if that's something that your parent would do, what more you think God would do if he says not to do something and he's serious about it? Because if he said it, he's serious about it. And we choose to not do it. I mean, we choose to do it anyway. God told, said that they were going to be, they were to be put to death. He was serious. So my takeaway is when God says don't do something, don't do it. If you read it and then it's in his word and it says, do not do whatever it is the saints do. It is a word for you to abide in and to follow. And it is to, for you to abide in and follow for a reason, because God is God. He is our father. He is our creator and he makes the rules. So him making the rules, he put us here in the same way he put us here. He can take us out of here. But we have rules that we have to follow, commands that God has given us to follow, not to control us, but to help us to understand that there are things that we just have to abide by. There are ways to go about how we do what we do. Um, everything is, is, there's an order of everything that we do. And in order to do this, you got to do this, just like directions when you're building stuff. There are directions. There are there there's rules. There are instructions on how to put this together or how to do this. So it's the same way with God's word and how to live life and how to do right in life and be you know have a relationship with God and be close to Him is follow God's instructions. And when you follow his instructions, you see the masterpiece. You see how things in your life come together. You see how things that you once were doing and didn't understand that you were doing it may not be good things or whatever. You start to understand more things about life and yourself and how to go about things and God's ways and stuff. Things start to come more clear, but you have to read and follow the directions that are giving. Don't just read it, follow it, do what it says to. Because when you try to do it your own way, what happens? It probably, it when you do it your own way, things become more of a mess. Which, which in, um, which in other words, your life becomes more of a mess because you try to do it your way instead of doing it what the instructions say, the Bible, God's word. So that was my takeaway from that. So I pray that um, whatever your takeaway was, you know, just share it with me. I would love to hear your takeaway from this um, chapter, nine, uh, Exodus 19. I would love to hear from you. So thank you again for taking time out your day to spend with me. I feel so special. 
But thank you so much for your time. And um, I pray that you all have a wonderful and great evening and happy Sabbath to you all. Be blessed. Rest on God's holy day. Um, and just enjoy this day, you know, and just look around and look at God's creation and just look at his wonderful and beautiful creation and consider yourself blessed and highly flavored. But so don't forget to love on someone today. Be kind, speak kind. Don't just be kind and smile or give a gift, but speak kind words. Because sometimes we don't realize those words we speak out of our mouth can do a lot of damage. So let your words be kind. If you feel like it's going to be something ugly, don't say it at all. I know you all, all heard the saying, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say it at all. So be kind and be encouraging to others and be a blessing and um, be forgiving to one another. But and pray and lift one another up because we we're living in these times where we just need to be lifted up and we need to keep our minds stayed on God because and when you look around, you hear on the news what's going on. So keep praying and lifting each other up and trusting and leaning on God for his love and his direction. He'll lead you every step. And don't forget to mask up, wash those hands, and social distance, guys. So I'm going to leave you out with the word of prayer. Hope you enjoyed this um, chapter. And I have a wonderful weekend. And I will see you guys willingly Monday. Father in heaven, thank you for your word, your instructions, and always leading us. God, sometimes we, we know your word and sometimes we don't know your word. But God, sometimes we just do our own thing, God. And a lot of times when we try to do it our own way, God, we make a bigger mess. But God, help us to understand that it is very important when you give us instructions and directions on how to do things, Father, and what not to do. Help us to remember it is important, God, and it is beneficial for us. To obey, God, your instructions, God. You gave us the instructions for a reason. Just as our parents, Father, those who have raised us, they have given us rules and directions and what to do and what not to do, God. And when we didn't do those things, God, and follow those instructions, God, we got in trouble for that. So even more so greater, our creator, our provider, our everything, you gave us rules. And God, you wanted us to follow these things, God, so that we wouldn't have to struggle and suffer the way we end up suffering because of bad decisions or things that we chose to do instead of taking your advice, God, and what you told us to do. So help us to be wiser. Help us to be stronger, to follow your ways, God. Because God, what you have told us to do, you were very serious about it and you wanted us to follow it through. And God, I know you understand, God, when we fall, we mess up, we make bad decisions, God. And you're always there picking us up and helping us to fix our problems, God. But help us to not continue to do that, God. Because, God, we don't want to continue to disobey you, Father God, and continue to have to go through things that we could avoid, Father. So help us to learn and do better, Lord. Help us to have a great weekend. Bless this Sabbath day. <coughs> help us to honor it. Help us to do all, God, things that you will have us to do on your Sabbath day. Help us to trust in your every word. Help us to obey your word, Father. I'm asking God for your healing, your comfort, your peace, your strength, your guidance, and your deliverance, Father. Upon us all, Lord, because we need it, Lord. Just lift us up and give us words of encouragement, Father, and help us to be a blessing, God. Send someone to be a blessing to us, God. But see us through this day. Help us have a great day. Keep everyone safe out there traveling. And bring everyone back home at the point of time and hour, Father. But Father, give us a word continually, Father. And just help us to enjoy this evening with one another, Father. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you for everyone that will get on to listen to your word and be blessed by it, Father. Father, give them understanding and insight on what it is, Father. And how that what they can take away from this chapter, Father. Thank you for prayer. Thank you for everything you do.
Continue to be with us and show us the way. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for us and for interceding for us and for coming back for us. And God, thank you for your holy angels, your Holy Spirit, and your word. And thank you for giving your only begotten son to give his life for us. Thank you for you. Thank you for what you stand for, who you stand for. And just thank you for just always being with us. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. All right, everyone, have a great evening and weekend and be safe out there. I love you all and I will talk back with you on Monday, God willing.